land of brave Gorkhas, birthplace of Lord Buddha, and the country with the tallest mountain in the world, now faces a problem they must overcome or else it may be its downfall. For the country of its size sees a major player on this Game of Thrones between the dragon and the tiger. But we know Game of Thrones. It does not take long for the players to turn into pieces. So now the question is, will she survive and is she capitalizing the opportunities of this escalating situation? To understand Nepal's role in this conflict, let's understand what on earth is going on between India and China. Himalayas separates the world's two superpowers that contains more than 30% of the world population. It is worrisome that these two giant nations may fight a bloody war in the time of nuclear era. China and India have been fighting over land disputes for over 60 years. Disagreements that led to this recent conflict is China's Belt and Road Initiative. The BRI is a large-scale initiative to create new trade routes that will link China to the rest of the globe. However, the initiative covers much more than just infrastructure. It aims to enlarge China's interconnected market, strengthen its political and economic influence, and foster the circumstances necessary for the country to develop a high-tech economy. The BRI is driven mostly by three components. The first and most often discussed in China's conflict with the US, the Malacca Strait, which sits off the coast of Singapore. A significant ally to the US is where the vast bulk of Chinese foreign trade travels. China's ambition to establish its own safer trade lines are entirely dependent on the initiative. There is little doubt that China wants to increase the interdependence of the participating countries' economies with the Chinese economy in order to increase its own political and economic power. The Belt and Road Initiative is regarded as a key component of the Chinese government's effort to boost the economy of the nation's core provinces, which have historically lagged behind wealthier coastal regions. The government makes substantial budget allocations and encourages companies to compete for belt and road contracts in order to promote and assist businesses in these central regions. Nepal has already included itself to capitalize on this project and I will explain this later. The problem with this project came when China extended their hands to Pakistan who is currently in war with India. So in response, India increased its military watch along the borders with China. They banned several Chinese apps such as PUBG, TikTok, WeChat, Alibaba to name the few. India reached out to their western partners to discuss and stop the spread of communism. India also blames China for encroaching its borders, which led to the soldiers of both countries fist fighting with each other. China and India are not new to this. They have been fighting since they gained their independence in 1940s over the land encroachments and border disputes due to the unclear maps and borders presented by their colonizers. Now, how is Nepal even related to this and why is it benefiting from the crumbling relationship between India and China? Nepal is landlocked and sandwiched between India and China, both economic powerhouses. Due to its geographical proximity and historically long linkages with both China and India, Nepal's foreign policy is not independent but is mutually interdependent. Nepal's foreign policy has always prioritized maintaining balanced relationship with these two countries. For decades now, Nepal is benefited from India and China by acting as a buffer zone between the tiger and the dragon. Nepal has always been an independent nation ruled by a monarch until 2008. Nepal and Tibet enjoyed their bittersweet trade relationship for many centuries. In the 17th and 18th century, the majority of goods in Nepal came from Tibet. But Tibet and Nepal also has a history of war, the Sino-Nepalese War, also known as Sino-Gorkha War, and in Chinese, the Campaign of Gorkha, was an invasion of Tibet by Nepal from 1788 to 1792. The war was initially fought between Nepalese Gorkhas 
and Tibetan armies over a trade dispute related to a long-standing problem of low-quality coins manufactured by Nepal for Tibet. The Nepalese army under Bahadur Saha plundered Tibet under Quang rule and Tibetans signed the Treaty of Kerung paying the annual tribute to Nepal. However, Tibetans requested for Chinese intervention and Sino-Tibetan forces under Phuk Angrin raided Nepal up to Nuakot only to face a strong Nepalese comeback. Thus, both countries signed the Treaty of Petrovati as a stalemate. The war ended in Nepal accepting terms decided by China. Therefore, China's domination of Tibet brought it into a direct political and diplomatic relationship with Nepal that had a treaty basis and a specific set of modality. While Nepal was driven primarily by commercial but also a secondary political motives in Tibet, China dealt with Nepal primarily in the context of security since historically speaking, Nepali aggression in Tibet is what concerned it most. And secondly, improving relationship with Nepal also meant a peaceful buffer from India, a growing superpower. The Gorkha War, also known as the Anglo-Nepalese War, took place between the British troops of East India Company or modern day India and the Gorkhali army of the Kingdom of Nepal from 1st November 1814 to 4 March 1816. The Indian subcontinent's hilly north was the target of ambitious expansionist plan from both sides. The Treaty of Sugoli, which gave some Nepalese controlled territory to the East India Company, put an end to the conflict in 1816 AD. The Garhwal Kingdom, the Patiala State and the Kingdom of Sikkim joined forces with the East India Company to help the British war effort against Gorkha Kingdom. The two Thapa families, Thapa dynasty and Amar Singh Thapa were mostly in charge of the Kingdom of Gorkha's military effort. After the war, Men from Nepal were acknowledged by East India Company and were offered positions in the military. Hence, British Gorkha Army and Gorkha Rifles Regiments were born. India's post-independence ties with Nepal were predicted on the intimate cultural and historical links between the two countries. As India's first Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru noted, though Nepal was an independent country, it was very closely allied to India in culture and tradition, and we did not look upon it as a foreign country. New Delhi also regarded China as an interloper in Nepal in 1950 who threatened India's security and interest in the region, ignoring at least a century of Sino-Nepali history centering around Tibet. With the fear in mind that Nepal is a buffer zone, India always expected to keep Nepal under its wing so India could feel safer from China. As a result, Nepal and India shares a long history of trade and commerce through open border. India accounts for about two-thirds of Nepal's merchandise trade, about one-third of trade in services, and one-third of foreign direct investment. But recently, India has been pushing Nepal out of its shadows. After the earthquake of 2015 in Nepal, they were unable to get their one-third of their gas and petroleum from China due to the landslides along the northern border and it turned towards India for help. However, at this key point in time, there was a blockade at the border. India urged the Madesi people of Nepal to resolve their conflict because they were the ones obstructing borders, crossing and delaying supply. There were strikes in Nepal's Tarai region. Since before the new constitution was enacted, Indian trucks cannot enter Nepal due to the unrest in Tarai at all. There were also claims in Indian media that Madesi demonstrators were entering Indian soil and hurling rocks at Nepal. Nepal speculated that it was not Nepali Madesi, but India who had caused the blockade. When some Nepali experts urged the government to internationalize the issue because India had broken its commitment to the Nepal-India Friendship Treaty and was in violation of numerous trade, transit and commerce laws. The government of Nepal was unable to accurately communicate the true nature of the country's issues to the international community. While in Kathmandu, the administrations requested international assistance to address the fuel crisis that was severely affecting Nepalese life. As a result of severe lack of cooking gas and liquefied petroleum gas, the Nepali government began selling firewoods in Kathmandu. Using induction cookers was not a long-term solution to Nepal's severe energy issue and power outages. The Indian government denied enforcing a blockade, saying that the reason 
Indian trucks were avoiding Nepal was because of worries about their safety following the violent demonstrations. The border barriers were caused by unrest, riots, and demonstrations on the Nepalese side by part of their people, according to the Indian Ministry of External Affairs. India's assertions were refuted by Nepalese governments, which insisted that there was no significant security issues that would prohibit the trucks from entering Nepal. Lakshmi Prasad Dhakal, a spokesperson of Nepal, maintained that the Madesi demonstrations had been going on for a while and that Indian trucks had been entering Nepal up to September 23, 2015 without incidents. It was later reported that the vehicles weren't allowed to enter Nepal by the Indian side, thus resulting in long queues of Nepalese trucks stranded for days inside the Indian border. The Indian Oil Corporation reportedly refused to fill the Nepalese trucks following instruction from higher authorities. This caused a huge crack between Nepal and Indian government, and KP Oli, Prime Minister of Nepal turned his back on India and openly welcomed China and its gestures for help. Furthermore, in 2020, India releases a map which shows Lipulekh and Limpiadura as its territory. India has been an effective position of this territory for at least 60 years. Nepal claims it conducted a census there in early 1950s and refers to the 1815 Sugauli Treaty as legitimizing its claim. People living in these territories had been citizens of Nepal and their lands and properties were registered to Nepal and they had been paying taxes to Nepal. Yet, India claimed that it had controlled this territory and built other infrastructure here before, beside conducting its administration and developing military forces up to the border pass with China. This reason is of strategic importance and the new road is now one of the quickest links between Delhi and the Tibetan plateau. However, this pushed Nepal even further from India. Now finally the question, how can Nepal capitalize this relationship? As we all know that both China and India requires strong relationship with Nepal because Nepal is a buffer between each other and their safety from one another. If the situation ever escalates to a full-scale war, Either of these two nations would love to station their military presence in Nepal because of its strategic location and safer elevation. I rarely see this happening, given that Nepal has always been a sovereign nation and never had a foreign military presence in the country. Even the thought of this recently triggered Nepalese citizens when MCC was presented to Nepal by the United States. Nepal didn't like the idea that US may possibly be able to establish their troops on Nepali soil. Nepal has already started few efforts to develop its country using the situation between India and China, but it seems like they need a stronger negotiator and a leader. The Trans-Himalayan multidimensional connectivity network that includes infrastructure projects such as the Trans-Himalayan Railway Project and the Dhamma Clean Industrial Park, a joint venture is undertaking in Japa, Eastern Nepal with the partnership of China. Talks for Nepal-China Railway project is already underway and China has promised about $118 million support. If Nepal could negotiate a better deal or even find a way to include India into the loop, it would be a great achievement for their economy and infrastructure. Building better routes linking China and India seems like the most effective way for Nepal to upgrade its own infrastructure without spending much of their own money. Both China and India are pretty liberal to this thought because it would create windows of opportunities for all three of these nations in terms of commerce and trade. It would bring more jobs and contracts to Nepal and help with its high unemployment rate. Foreign currency and contracts would also mean higher wages for Nepal. This could be a golden opportunity for Nepal's government to make an active effort to stop young Nepalese from migrating out of their country in search of jobs. If Nepal could bring China and India into an agreement to build a train and road networks that passes Nepal, it is a win-win for all three of these countries. Despite the bittersweet relationship with India, their contributions cannot be overlooked. Mohendra Highway that stretches from east to the west of Nepal was built with the help of India and other foreign aids. Before the road was built, Nepalese were compelled to travel via Indian territory while visiting from one district to another. In 1961, King Mohendra laid the foundation stone for the construction of the East Waste Highway. The highway has greatly contributed to all-round socio-economic development of the country. Kosi Barrage was also built with the agreement and the help from India. 
Even now, we have seen multiple efforts from India to strengthen the relationship between these two nations. Some examples are recently inaugurated Bal Ai Hospital in Nepalgans and Rapti Cold Storage Building, built with the Nepal Bharat Development Corporation. The new hospital, which cost 46.64 million Nepali rupees to construct with the help of an Indian grant, features a general ward, a private ward, an operation room, and many more. The new 3200 metric ton cold storage was built for a total of 9.66 crore with the help of Indian government and former user group, who covered the remaining costs. There are other several small projects that are being completed with the help of India in an effort to strengthen the relationship with Nepal. All this being said, Nepal must be very careful with its treaty because currently political situation of the world is so fragile that it could break any time and Nepal wouldn't want to be stuck between the war of two emerging giants that could destroy its economy. Both India and China also has a bad reputation for encroaching their neighbor's land. Thus, Nepal shall tread these waters carefully. Xi Jinping wants to paint China on the center stage of the world. This is the best opportunity for Nepal to tag along and capitalize on its location. Modi is also doing his best to put India in a center stage. If Nepal could ride this wave, who knows? It could be called the Switzerland of Asia in just a couple of decades. Thank you very much for watching guys. Like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video, subscribe for more content like this, and until next time, peace out.